Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Takayuki Tatsumi. I'm invited here just because of my book, Full Metal Apache, he published in 2006 from Duke University Press, uh, included a chapter called uh, Waiting for Godzilla. So well, today, he, I would like to develop my theory about the King of Monsters. So then uh, let me start by showing you my PowerPoint. Okay, uh, so what today's title is uh, on the origin of Godzilla species. Let me start. Uh, the first science fiction I read as a schoolboy was The Lost World uh, by Arthur Conan Doyle. In this novel published in 1912, dinosaurs that strode the earth some 170 million years ago are alive and well deep in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. The novel also features the striking appearance of the paleontologist Professor Challenger, who risks his professional reputation by setting off on an expedition and returning with a captured pterodactyl to make a public announcement of the lost world's existence in England. The impact of the lost world very naturally carried me into Jules Vance's A Journey into the Center of the Earth, published in 1864, which also fascinated me with a number of dinosaurs inhabiting the horror earth. Therefore, the latest film, Godzilla vs. Kong, the fourth work of the Monster Bus series attracted me very, very much, for it not only revived the very hollow us Jules Van conceived in the mid 19th century, but also reminded me of the etymology of Gojira, not Godzilla. As the original film Gojira, uh, Honda Ishiro directed in 1954, precisely shows this proper noun Gojira, consisting of the three Chinese characters. Gojira uh, was the name given to a legendary monster by the inhabitants of the fictitious Oto Island, belonging to the Ogasawara Islands, that is, the Boning Islands, nicknamed as the Oriental Galapagos. It is widely believed today that the name Gojira was the etymological love child of gorilla as represented by King Kong and Kujira, the Japanese word for whale, but the apocryphal explanation was invented in the mid 1950s by an employee of the Toho Film Company. I still find this etymology very interesting because the legacy of Herman Melville's mega novel of a white whale entitled Moby Dick published in 1851 was inherited by Honda Ishiro's directed Gojira in 1954. While 19th century world was uh, driven by whale oil symbolized by Moby Dick, Post-war post -war world in the 20th century was controlled by nuclear energy as represented by the king of the monsters. In his 1963 manifesto, Dear Iwan Efremov, a critic of socialist science fiction theory, Komatsakyo, one of the pioneers of modern Japanese science fiction, states as follows, quote, Godzilla is a symbol of the nuclear fears that have been revived in the current age by technological progress. It is a contemporary monster as compelling as Moby Dick was in its time." Unquote. From the perspective of literary history, we can say that there was a natural progression in which Melville's novel Moby Dick gave rise to Gojira. But from the perspective of film history, it was rather Gojira that brought about the monstrousness of the white whale in John Huston's directed movie, Moby Dick, completed in 1956, a couple of years later than Gojira. At this point, 
Let us note that Conan Doyle's The Lost World was published precisely at this time in 1912, which falls squarely between the completion of Scottish social anthropologist James Fraser's collection of primitive myths, superstitions, and beliefs, The Golden Bow, and Japanese representative nativist ethnologist Kunio Yanagita's Tales of Tono, a collection of the vanishing folk tales of Japan's northeastern area, which is considered a foundational text of Japanese folklore studies. The paradox is that reaction to the accelerated pace of Western modernity caused a revival of the oldest forms of folkloric imaginings, such that at the turn of the century, they were naturalized on a global scale. Likewise, Godzilla brought forth collective memory through nuclear testing, especially by associating the dinosaur with Japanese myth as a kind of kami, that is Shinto divinity or spirit. Then uh, please take a look at uh, literary critic Yasuo Nagayama's book, The Heraldry of Modern Japan, published in 1992. This book attempts a spirited Shintoist reinterpretation of the origins of Gojira. Uh, originally, Shintoist factions at the onset of the Meiji era identified uh, themselves as protecting the state against Buddhist movements. However, due to their own lack of clear scripture or doctrine, comparable to Christianity or Buddhism. They lacked the missionary functions necessary to awaken modern spirituality. The central figure who sought to overcome this limitation was O Ishigori Masumi, the Shinto thinker and theorist of Japan as the land of the gods. Arguing against biblical myth, he drew upon his own shamanic powers and reorganized Shintoism as a claim for the origins of humanity from the dinosaurs. Uh, the attempts to reformulate Japanese myths, uh, which resemble the creationist move in the American South, were already powerfully enforced from the Meiji to Taisho periods. Much as the essence of a state theory called Leviathan took shape and spread through Western Europe. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Thomas Hobbes, it gained currency in Japan after the Meiji Revolution amidst the upheaval over theories of reconstructing Japan as a sacred nation and in the wake of Darwinian evolutionary theory. Clearly, if there was a mythological system in place, that supported the legend of the Leviathan as the greatest strength guiding the modern Western state. And this was the dilemma Japan was confronting directly. Then there was no alternative for theories of the Japanese state, but to thoroughly incorporate and essentially transform the dinosaur legend. Evidently, both Shintoist new religions and English mysticism were predicated on the hypothesis that human beings and dinosaurs coexisted, not in the Jurassic period from 200 million to 140 million years ago, but a mere 200,000 years ago. In the 19 80s, Americans fixated not only on the monster's sudden evolutionary mutation, but also upon Gojira as an image representing the monstro monstrosity of Japan's rise as an economic superpower. Gojira used to represent the disaster of nuclear arms and the threat they posed to all of humanity. Before long, uh, Gojira was made into a series and the monster was rehabilitated as a mythic guardian deity of Japan, going so far as to produce the impression that it was a guardian deity of nuclear civilization granted by the United States. The shift from victim of 
nuclear power to its defender neatly coincided with the post-war period of high economic late capitalist growth when Japan itself underwent rapid and monstrous mutation. To the extent that Japan itself was imagined as the greatest monster brought forth by nuclear power, the United States did not need to invent a uh, 200,000 year timeline. It was still in an age of competition and coexistence between the dinosaur as threatening other and Western modernity as the reigning champion of humanity. Thank you for your attention.